So the next question we get a lot in the comments, you know, is a very good product. We talk about all the different yeah. benefits. In our last video, we talked about how close we are to the, the neighbor's house. So for sound protection, we've got fire protection, we have thermal protection. Um, the crosswoven fibers allow for um, less uh, air infiltration through it. I've always used it on the inside, especially mm -hmm. in certain counties where yeah. you have to be super good with fire protection on the inside of the house where you've got these old houses and doing for blocking. So um, why not just use just rigid foam board on the outside of the house? Uh, we even had Matt Reisinger use it on his house, but he also yeah. it kind of came to a little confession point. He said he regretted using that yeah. because of termites and some of those yeah, other things. Yeah, I mean, you know, rigid foam board has been used for a long time and it, it is an effective product as long as you mm -hmm. get your control layers and you get, you know, you understand the vapor or the, the hygrothermics, which is the moisture control of, of the assembly, and you got the right R value of it, the right thickness, and it's installed properly, and you got all your connections are right. I mean, anything that's done correctly is gonna work, and it's gonna work well. The thing with foam is, of course, it has a quicker fire rating uh, than stone wool does. Um, it doesn't dry out, now, then it's, but it's used more as, you know, more vapor control. It's tighter, it's tighter, they're closed cell or open cell, I mean, those things can work for different reasons. Yeah. But when you have something, and, and I talk about this in one of my videos from a, a, a couple of years ago, is, is the reason we sort of chose using stonewall insulation in the first place is that when we're looking for a product that deals with the things that we deal with in the Southeast or anywhere in the country, or anywhere in the world, uh, moisture, bugs, yeah. fire, the R value, uh, uh, the the ease of install, all of those things, everything, it all, like in the end, all of those things pointed to this stone wool. It doesn't burn. I mean, it yeah. does at a certain temperature, it'll melt. So all of the factors that you look for in a product for insulating your home, these take, it takes, it answers all of those questions. Like how exactly. do I get a product that does it? Not saying foam doesn't work or this or that, but spray foam, we're not going to get into that here, but it is something it's, We've, we've had issues with it and so many health issues with a lot of other issues, the way it's installed. This is, this just answers all the questions. Essentially it's, is it perfect? Nothing is no, but it takes care of all of our concerns and, and, and what we're looking for in an insulation product. Yeah. And for me, it's, it's about solving problems without creating new problems. Yeah. So, um, I'm looking to retrofit my house. We're going to use uh, rock wool in the cavities and also on the outside. Uh, but one of the challenges, I've got the, the foam board on it. And when I was renovating, I didn't realize the percussive effects of having the rigid mm. on the outside. So when the neighbors were, were talking, it was basically vibrating those panels. I could hear that. Sure. Or my, when my kids were making noise, it was just like, wow, this isn't really absorbing much insulation. Right, right, Maybe right. providing the thermal break. But yeah. And the other thing in the South, dealing with bugs and termites yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. They don't. So, you know, for me, being married to a Southern woman, she doesn't like bugs in the house. Yeah. So we're looking yeah. at, that's why yeah. we like the air seal. Yeah. I would say it's for energy efficiency, but honestly, I, uh, I'm i doing it so, just so I don't have to like, hey, Matt, come kill the spider or whatever, sure. air seal, but the sound as well. Cause yeah. got three boys, they're noisy. Yeah. We don't want sound coming in. We also don't want sound going out. And yeah. it's usually the sound from the inside out that we're worried about more. Yeah, and you know, uh, the, the with with the kind of fibrous product like this, it, it doesn't allow that transmission through the product itself. Like yep. whereas like a foam or a plas a foam plastic is going to allow sort of an impact, you know, exactly. sound and it sort of transfers the sound a little bit better. Now you put insulation of rigid foam on the outside, it does help with sound. This has a better I mean it's just been tested to show better because it doesn't have that sort of it can't commute commute through it as exactly. fast or as easily. Um, the expansion and contraction of this product is almost zero. That's another thing that happens with a foam plastic product is as it shrinks, it's opening up the gaps. That's not only for air sealing, but it's also for sound. Sound goes through those air gaps, right? And so that's, you know, that's another thing, factor in yep. what makes this sort of this material, this work so well is that it, it just maintains its rigidity or maintains its, its form and its function and its efficiency long term and we've we've they've been uh, op they've opened up a building recently in Europe i think it was um, about 60 years old and they had some of this rigid oh, yeah. foam board good as um, basically as good as it uh, as as the day it was produced the r value was the same all of its properties were basically the, exactly the same as it was 
the day that they made it. So this stuff just really holds up. It's a durable. At least for 60 years, which is okay. plenty. That's yeah, at work. least, yeah. Don't take that. It's, it's like the pharmaceuticals. You can always say yeah, it's, yeah. it's only good for five years. That's yeah. as long as we've tested it. Yeah. 60 years, there's probably, I'm, if, I'm, if it's, I'm sure it's a couple hundred. If it's hundred. gone that long, it's going to go a lot longer. Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing that I, you know, some of these webinars I've heard too. So with, with rock wool, the colder the temperature, the R value, is not affected the same as it was some of these other materials. So some materials, it gets colder, the R value actually goes down. Yeah. With rock wool, it may be a slight increase, but at least it's not a degradation that's the right. colder it gets. So that's yeah. one of the other factors that, right. I, that, I, that I considered when using yeah, it. Yeah, and there's a, there is a threshold. Everything's measured at a, t I mean, everything's kind of measured at a, starting at uh, 75 degrees and then it's up above and below mm -hmm. 75 degrees. And so, when you from that threshold from that baseline all these insulations are measured and yes stone wool does increase its r value as it drops even the colder it gets it does keep going even above 75 degrees maybe it's 95 degrees okay do a do a, do a little correction down in there okay <laughs> is it 95 or, but above that the r value does also change now there are multiple reports out there and they all have slightly different results Products like polyisocyanurate, also, there have been a lot of reports. Things have changed because they're changing the formula, yep. the materials that go into it. But at one point, it dropped pretty dramatically as it went below. So as the temperature dropped, which is what you did, you want yep. the opposite, right? It was dropping in our value. It still does that. It's just not as much as it used to. So, yeah, we got to know about those, those things. But, yes, this does show all their products that um, from that baseline, above and below it does increase its R value. Okay. Yeah.